Well, good morning. My name is Mr. Millar, and I am so happy to be asked to come here today to read a book with you all. Before we get started, I guess I should point out that I'm sitting beside the fish tank, and all the fish seem to be swimming and doing well. Now, the book that I brought with me today is called Brother Giovanni's Little Reward. This book was written by a lady that lives in West Virginia. Brother Giovanni was a happy, happy man. He loved to pray and he loved to sing, but most of all, he loved to bake for all God's creatures. He was the best baker his monastery had ever had. As he mixed the dough each day, he chanted a little rhyme. Mix, mix, slap it flat, knead the dough just like that. You see, Brother Giovanni, and that must be his cat. But all was not well in the monastery. From the classroom at the end of the hall, the abbot's voice thundered. The bishop will be here before the month is out. He will want to hear you, children, say your prayers. Children, are you listening? You must learn your prayers. The bell tower clanged. Here's the bell tower. The lesson was over. The children swarmed down the hallway and out the door. You can see them running. It's always fun to run out of school, isn't it? At the midday meal, the abbot said with a weary sigh, Brothers, you know it is the bishop's money that buys the flour for our bread, the beans for our soup, and the leather for our shoes. If the children cannot say their prayers, I worry that our new bishop may be very unhappy. Brother Jeremy and Brother Leo, we have all tried, but nothing has worked. Brother Giovanni, you are our last hope. You are young and full of energy, and the children love you. But, but Father Abbot, I only know how to bake, Giovanni stammered. Pray, brother, the abbot said, God has given you many gifts. He will show you how to use them. Now there's Father Abbott and there's Brother Giovanni and there's the cat. So, night and day, Brother Giovanni prayed. He prayed when he was on his knees, arms crossed, fingers touching his shoulders. But he also prayed as he mixed his dough, as he threw crumbs to the birds, and as he made his round in the village, where his smile was as warm as and could warm the coldest house. So we see him up here with his arms crossed and his head bowed. He's making his dough and he's feeding some crumbs to the bird. And here he is visiting the people in the village. The abbot had said to use his gifts. Giovanni's voice was as rich as the, as the richest cream, as sweet as the sweetest honey. Would the children learn if he taught them to sing their prayers? He would try. The children did stop their pushing and shoving to listen when he sang, and they clapped when he finished, but they still did not learn their prayers. When Giovanni asked his brother Jeremy's advice, the other monk said, You have to be a mean, you have to put on a mean face to make the children listen. That's what I should have done. God had given Giovanni a smiling face. The corners of his mouth would only turn up. Time was running out. The bishop would be visiting soon, too soon. So as he stirred the flour and water, Giovanni tried as hard as he could to look mean. Have you, is it hard to look mean for you? Let's see. Here he is trying to pull his corners of his mouth down, pull his eyebrows up, and, oh, and his mouth wide. 
Does he look mean? Is it going to work? In the classroom, he pulled the corners of his mouth down, but that made it hard to talk. The little monkeys, the children, like monkeys, the little children imitated him. One boy <laughs> rolled on the floor laughing. It wasn't long before everyone was laughing, including Brother Giovanni. There is already too much meanness in the world, Giovanni said to himself. The children should be happy to learn their prayers. So here he is smiling, and see the children smiling with him and making faces. At festival time, he had watched the people in the village hop and skip, circle and bow. There was certainly much happiness in that. Could dancing help him teach the children? At least it would tire them out so they would sit and listen and maybe learn. So Giovanni and the children whirled and twirled. Never had any of them had so much fun. But the children still did not learn their prayers. <sighs> what to do? What could he do? Now there were only 12 days left before the bishop's visit. Giovanni could not sleep. He imagined the bishop growing more and more upset when the children could not say their prayers. Everything depended on him. He did not know what to do. Giovanni did know that everyone smiled when they ate his delicious bread. Should he give the children little loaves of bread for learning their prayers? No, it should be something very special. Here's Giovanni sleeping, and there's his cat, and he's dreaming of the, what the bishop is going to be saying to him. The next morning, Giovanni was so tired from worrying and praying that he mixed way too much dough. He rolled little pieces of dough this way and that, but he couldn't think of anything that would make an, uh, something special. So Giovanni bent his head in prayer. Looking down at his crossed arms, an idea, a perfectly wonderful idea, came to him. Yes, yes, he shouted, and he worked his dough faster and faster. Roll, roll, twist, twist, praying arms, just like this. And here he is. He's got an idea. He sang, he danced. When his little pieces of dough had risen, he brushed them with water showered them with some salt, and then shoved them into the oven. It wasn't long before a heavenly aroma filled the kitchen. When he carried the basket into the classroom, the children crowded around him. Now, now, children, he said, and the corners of his mouth turned way up. Let us follow our, let us fold our arms just like these little arms. And we will pray. We will all do well. We will each have a treat. If we all do well, we will each have a treat. As the days went by, miracle of miracles, the children learned their prayers. For Brother Giovanni, little rewards, pratiolas, he called them, everyone was working as hard as they could. So here's his basket of pratiolas. And the children are learning their prayers. The day of the bishop's visit dawned sunny and clear. The monastery had been scrubbed from top to bottom. The children, too, had been scrubbed until their faces shone. With great ceremony, the bishop took his place in the little chapel. One by one, the children recited their prayers. All perfect! Well done, the bishop said. Well done. God bless you, my children. God bless all here. There's the bishop in his robe and his hat. And the children are all proud and they all have their arms folded in prayer. At the great celebration that followed, the table was spread with plates of figs, bowls of nuts, and, best of all, Brother Giovanni's pretiolas, those little rewards that we know today as pretzels. I don't know if you all knew the story about pretzels, 
the Pratiolas, Little Rewards. But I think now that we've had this story, I went to the grocery store and I brought a bag of Pratiolas, of pretzels, Little Rewards. Let's take one out and see if you see Brother Giovanni when you look at the pretzels. These are quite small. But if I hold it up like here, do you see his head bowed and his, the arms going up? You know, they say the three holes that you see represent the, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, the next time you open a bag of pretzels, take a look and you see if you see Brother Giovanni when you eat your pretzels. Thank you for sharing this with me this morning. And I'd like to close with a little prayer. Let us bow our heads and fold our arms like Brother Giovanni. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless these children and keep them in your loving care. Amen.